welcome achievers to your easy achievers game podcast for the week of march 24th 2023 i'm one of your hosts elijah today solo as i navigate this treacherous trenches of news and i relate to you every single friday if you're new here of course this is the easy achievers gaming podcast i go live every single friday as we analyze dissect and discuss the gaming news of the week now i hope this finds you well everyone listening i hope you're having a nice day a good day i am having a pretty good day i i had a good night's sleep i woke up puppy you know walked puppy of course um, and that's one of my favorite parts of the day now, especially early in the morning. Like, it's such a nice way of capping the morning. I wake up, grab some water, walk outside with the pup. She uses the restroom. I get to sit in the sun. The sun's always blaring. Of course, in Georgia, you get that nice, like, it's almost always clear. So you get a nice sun on your face. You could kind of recharge for the day as it seeps in my skin. Before, the puppy almost never went out, right? Feel like you feel like you're not going outside enough. You're like, eh, you know, probably vitamin D deficient. Feel like I'm not going outside enough. Now I'm out there, hours upon hours of the day. It's really nice. What am I talking about? Anyways, you're here for gaming news, so let's get into it. Remember, oh, um, all the important stuff. Last week I gave a review for the Destiny 2 raid. I know not a lot of people will probably care, but if you play Destiny 2 and care about my thoughts on the raid, I gave my thoughts on the contest mode, the raid itself, uh, gave you kind of an encounter by counter look on the new raid. This is the first time I ever did anything Destiny content. Um, I threw it on the main channel. Maybe, I don't know, maybe that wasn't wise. Uh, but go check it out if you care about that. As it seems like it's doing pretty well as a lot of people are watching it. All the way through, anyway. We begin the show, as always, with... Stay with me, not so rapid fire. If you pre-order Diablo 4, then you're going to be able to preload the open beta. Of course, that is going live very soon. On whatever console you pre-ordered, as early access runs from March 17th to the 19th. That already happened, of course. And then again, for the open beta for everybody... March 24, 26, I will be there today playing it with um, my good friend Alex. And I will relate to you what I think about it. A lot of people are saying it's very good. It, it seems like it's Diablo. It doesn't seem like it's going to shock anyone, right? It, it seems to be as good as Diablo as Diablo gets, which is very exciting. I have not played really Diablo really at all. The closest experience I've had Diablo, I played a little bit of three, like literally a little bit, maybe an hour. Then keep me. Uh, I think there was other things out at the time as well. Um, but I went and played um, Boulder's Gate as a kid. And uh, 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 oh, what's that game? Dark Champions? I'm pretty sure. And I, lo I loved those. And that, I mean, that's pretty much Diablo, right? It's more of a single player Diablo. Um, I, I fell in love with those games as a, very, as a very young man. So I'm excited to try this. Maybe this will re-spark that interest I had when I was but a wee lad. Microsoft, to show its ability to work with many others, the Activision Blizzard deal is still pending, announced that they will be signing a 10-year deal with Ubitus, a cloud gaming provider based in Tokyo, Japan. They're known for working with many at Nintendo Switch cloud versions of games like the Forgotten City, Control, and a Plague Tale Requiem. Now, if you're noticing some things that are late, in quotes, than what I'm usually reporting on, uh, I did not do a show last week because of the Destiny 2 review, so I will be combining some of the old shows from uh, old news from last week and giving you my perspective on them. Just so you know. I don't have anything else to add to that. They're just trying to seem like they're working with people. Thing. Cool. Some veterans from Activision Blizzard have made a new studio called Magic Soup Games. A very familiar names as it was founded by Jen O'Neill, J. Allen Brack, and John Donham. That's really it. We know that they started a studio. There's a lot of remote jobs. I checked out their website. It is bare bones right now. Bare bones. Bare bones website. Uh, a lot of remote work. So, so if you're listening to the podcast, you might be interested in the actual job. You can go check it out. Uh, but there really is nothing else to say here. Uh, but there are very talented people making this studio. 
This is just a fun one. Ray tracing has been added to the current gen version of Elden Ring and the PC version in a recent patch. This is very cool. Not to my uh, knowledge, have we gotten a, uh, just a ray tracing update to to any game a year after its release? This is I feel like quite uncommon. As it's a free update, of course. It's of course getting ready for the DLC. But it's just a free update that you don't have to pay for, and you get ray tracing now on the current gen and PC versions. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I can think of um, Spider-Man Miles Morales a couple months after it released made that special version where where you could do like 4K 45 frames or something like that. Um, but that's the only one that came to mind when I when I really thought about it. you know what who else has done this, and I, I can't really think of someone else. Um, it's very cool. Um, from Soft just casually dropping a giant uh ray tracing update it's very cool for some reason people are shocked that there was originally going to be a redfall ps5 version this info was given out by arcane's harvey smith in an interview with Eurogamer. game director harvey smith has said quote we listen and we have already started work to address this in the future we have some things uh, like encrypt your save games and do a bunch of ui work to support it and so we're looking into it I'm not sure, I'm not supposed to promise anything, but we're looking into and working actively toward fixing it in the future, end quote. I, I remember Harvey being very um, willing to talk, as I imagine most people uh, would not have said this in his position, although that's very cool. I, I mean, if I was in his position, I'd probably say stuff like this, too. I don't give a shit, especially uh, when you're the game director, what are they going to fire you? Um, I hope they're able to work this out. I am one of the minds that we, we should have more things that we could play offline. It's just kind of annoying that you have to be online for everything, especially in this game where everyone said how good it is to play single player. Well, it's like, well, if it's that good, then why do you need to be online? Um, I would just love the reason that needs to be online. Is it pinging the server for something? They took out the microtransactions in this game, which is important to note. Um, there, there used to be some, but they, apparently this was all wiped out when they were purchased by Xbox. Um, so... If that's all gone so what why do we need to be online maybe it's maybe it's echoes of something it, it was playing to be uh, previously i don't know but uh it's funny that the preview that they just did which by the way no offense to people who previewed it um it's not really your fault it's 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 how they provided the preview but it was pretty bad i mean they had like two hours to play the game not really anyone could really speak on the game so i feel like it was just like a pointless preview because like people played two hours and were like yeah the shooting's fun and it's a lot like far cry i'm like all right cool we don't i i would love love the way more information but i don't really care too too much as i'm playing the game regardless of what anyone would have said so i guess it doesn't matter but I thought that was a little frustrating that everyone's doing the preview period now and it was only two hours. Why did they only get two hours? And then they didn't, you know, not important. Um, anyways, I'd love, I'd love to see that. I'll be curious to see if they actually can hold up to that. As he said, he doesn't promise anything, but why would he say that if he wasn't pretty sure he could do it? You know, or, you know, he, I say, of course, Arcane Studios. Stated by EA, this caused quite the hubbub over the week. Quote, starting April 28th, 2023, Battlefield 1943 and Battlefield Bad Company 1 and 2 will be removed from digital storefronts and you will be no longer have the ability to purchase them. This is in preparation to retire their online services on December 8th, 2023. Now, originally, uh, sorry, end quote. Now, originally, Mirror's Edge was included in these titles with, for some strange reason, as that is primarily a single-player game with a very light online content. But hours later, EA walked back on the decision to retire Mirror's Edge, stating it was added in error. Uh, uh, <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> There's no way they accidentally added a game to what they're retiring, and they only corrected it four hours later. Uh, no. So they definitely walked that back. Uh they definitely tested the waters with that a hundred percent single player game right with a very minimal multiplayer i believe the multiplayer was like leaderboards and stuff i don't even remember if you you didn't even play against people if i'm if my memory is uh uh not uh assassinating me today um it should it should have been just like you ran time trials and the leaderboard uh and that's it so 
shocking that they were going to do that. I mean, I mean, really showing their ass on this. Uh, because one, you're so, and I'm going to be a bit rude here. Uh, I apologize, but you're, you're either, your people are incompetent to the point where they accidentally added a video game that would have been retired, which is a huge deal. You're, you're saying we are eliminating a game we used to sell. And you added that by accident, which is like, what, what, who, who isn't proofreading your statements? Or two, you were bullied into, uh, you were going to do it, and you pretty much were bullied into not doing it. Which, which that's just, a, either way, looks terrible on you, uh, EA. Which, let's be frank, not incredibly surprising. I, I like EA. I'm not, I'm not the guy that's like, oh, I hate EA. I, I like their games and things, but... It, they make it so easy to make fun of them and this is just one of the examples of this being way too easy to 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 just to tear them down a little bit a little bit a little bit but they deserved it let's be fair that's fair that's all i have to add what did you guys think of uh of this not so rapid fire I, I really can't believe that ea story so let me know in the comments now we start the show as that core show that we're about to begin with of course my one of my favorite segments that is, what have you been playing? Now, this is, of course, for you at home. What have you been playing? Comment, tweet at me, have me email at 1000. I'm just curious. Um, right now, of course, uh, I'm not going to bore you with Destiny, so I'm going to move on and say um, I finished Dead Space. Started and completed Dead Space by the time I've talked to you before. And boy, 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 do I have uh, lots of thoughts on this game. Where to begin? Uh, okay, so I, I played a, a single playthrough of Dead Space. I'm kind of angry to go back, but another game I'm, I'm about to talk about is out, and I, I can't really do that. So Dead Space came out. I, I played it. I was really behind because, of course, Destiny 2 came out. It completely eclipsed everything I was playing. I had to get ready for the day one raid race. I was able to get the clear, the emblem, bowed out, everything. Okay, so now that all that's uh, gone through, Dead Space. Dead Space is such a special game as it was really one of the first games I ever played that really was like a survivor horror, I was really afraid game when I first played it back in 2005, seven? Uh, I forget the original day. I'll look it up in a second. Um, but that that just reminds me of that time when I played it, where it was just really special. I felt, I don't know, it was really special. I didn't really play too, too much else like that. Uh the only scary games I really remember playing around that time, and I can't even remember if I played them beforehand, uh, Gears of War 1, which is not a scary game, but there's a scary part that terrified me. If you played it, I'm sure you know it. It was when the, um, the, bl <laughs> excuse me, the blind giant, uh, uh, guy would walk around trying to find people. That was terrifying. And, um, Bioshock, which of course isn't, like a like terrifying game but it it has moments where it can make it really scary um i'm reminded of of the multiple times that i i got a couple jump scares in, in bioshock and things but that was really all i had on on my uh mind when playing dead space the first time and i lo i remember loving it uh loving to the point where it was probably my favorite survivor horror ever original release date and Let's see, 2008. Yeah, okay. I remember. I thought it came out after all those games. So, and it did. Um. And yeah, my original playthrough was fun. It was good. Of course, I'm playing it now, and I have much more of a, uh, n not to sound like a giant douche, um, a critic's eye, or at least uh, the ability to critique more things. And I found myself loving it just as much, if not more. Um, but having restraints on a couple things now this uh remake was i want to say before i say anything else because because i just want to get this out the way it is beautiful beautiful of course i'm playing it on my oled uh tv and it really is beautiful it the the blacks the the interior uh like you really get to like see everything it really feels like you're a ship when you have a good oled because it's just really like, when it's dark, it is dark, and you're afraid. You have the light, and it perfectly lights everything up, and everything is, like, just this kind of perfect black. And it just looks really beautiful. I was very, very, very stunned at, at how beautiful everything was. Uh, and then I'm going through. 
really forgetting a lot of the story beats. So I kind of got to experience all that again. I kind of got to experience a couple of the twists again, a couple of how things went. And that was really fun, especially the twist at the end. Of course, I won't spoil it here. But there was a lot of things I was like, wow, I, I'm really happy that I got to experience this kind of again. Because uh, it doesn't feel like, um, it kind of feels like I played it for the first time again, sort of. Uh, and I really liked that. It, it, the game was beautiful. The story is good. It, there's, he vo- uh, he's voiced this time, um, Isaac Clark, the main character. Which I was really worried about. Because, of course, he wasn't voiced in the first game. It was very strange. Obviously, when you'd play the game and he was a silent protagonist standing there as people talked at him for 10 hours or however much you played the game. And in this one, he's talking and it, it does feel pretty natural. I I was really worried it wouldn't. Um, there's only one time I really sat down and were like, that, you could tell that wasn't like they're not having a conversation. Well, then it's like. Jeez, sorry about that. Um. Had technical difficulty. I was recording and uh, I had to like re-listen to what I said because at some point it just turned it. My my mic just turned off. Um, it, not technically, I guess technically not the mic. The program that I use to like control everything. It's not important. I'm not gonna report you. But um, I re-listened. I was talking about um, the voice lines weren't perfectly matching up with with like some conversations. Um, there's only really two. It was it was the one. Uh, there's one where you, like you could tell the guy's like not really responding to what he's saying. He's kind of just talking. And then the second time where the where one of the antagonists says like, "Oh, I would ask you a question, but you don't seem to talk in sight," which doesn't work now. Um, it it, it doesn't work because he talks now. So it's like, okay, that, you know, it, it's like a funny inside joke, I guess, that's still in the game. Um, where like you can tell people it's like, hey, well, he used to not talk, uh, but. That's just something I wanted to bring up. Uh, as again, that's how nitpicky you have to get to really criticize this game, as it is very good. Oh, sorry, I did get a drink. Um, it's just really good. So that's how many times that's that's what I have to like nitpick act to really have any critiques about this game. Now, moving on to the core things like how much I love the combat and these things. I won't. I'm not gonna bore on this too long but i i really did like love everything else the 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 weapons are great how beautiful everything is how much um i get the plaques are incredible um how pretty everything is uh this is probably still my favorite survivor horror game i love the tram system the way they have like this kind of system where you can like drive back and forth i loved doing all the side missions i did them all before i beat the game uh Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. I won't. I won't stay on this too too long. As maybe we'll do a spoiler cast or something about it. I don't know. But Death Space, please go buy it. Please pay the full. I think it's well worth the full price. You can replay it. It's got very good replayability because New Game Plus is so good. They give you like a whole new suit and a bunch of money and a bunch of upgrade points and stuff. So it really is worth it. Go go give it a shot if you have not, or if you've even replayed the Dead Space Arisen. I think it's it really is worth a replay with what they done with this game and the little things they've added now it's kind of a similar side of that same coin of of playing death space i've played resident evil 4 for the first time i've played resident evil 4 this is of course a remake that had that just came out uh yesterday as of recording i guess or sorry as you're listening to this i apologize um and it is Resident Evil so far I'm very early I have an hour I believe of playtime I met the merchant is what I'll say if you know the game um and so far so good um I am very curious on why this is a lot of people's favorite survivor horror game um hopefully my expectations haven't been blown out of proportion because it really was for years hearing about this game like, just straight up years hearing about this game, of how, how good it was, like, how it was the best game, uh, the best survival horror game. People, like, barely mentioning Dead Space in that conversation, and it was always this game. So, let's see. Because so far, I'm like, okay, this is a good game. Like, I'm too early to really say anything. But I, I can't wait to really get into this, because I want to see people's perspective on this, as I have never pr- prayed it played it prior and i only knew of like screenshots of course and like the famous like 
uh, Chainsaw Guy and you know all these things. So can't wait to play more. I want to know what's going on. So far, the story seems w- weird. I understand that the story is weird. Of course, it's Resident Evil. I mean, it's supposed to be weird, I guess. But the um, and <laughs> I, I'm curious. I've seen like lines and things that are said that are just very dated. So. Oh, that's why. Okay, there was an update. Okay, Jesus. That's why my thing broke right there. Not important. Um, th- there, th- It feels very of age. Like, it feels like a 2000s game with a couple of lines he's already said, and I'm like, Phew. all right. Um, hopefully that isn't too, too much, but of course it's not Resident Evil if it isn't a bit silly. Um, and honestly, let's say a bit complicated because um, I know I've I've listened to like the lore of Resident Evil. It is very complicated. <laughs> you would think it's not. It is. There's like uh, like the original Doctor and these things in like the fifties or something. That happened. like it's I don't know. Let, let's move on, but because again, I'm not deep enough into the game to really tell you anything. But so oh, it, uh, uh, I will say this: it feels it feels great so far. Like right now, what I've been playing, me with the gun, feels great. Rumor Roundup. For a rumor perfect for this segment, a recent trademark from Konami may point to a new installment in the Castlevania series. As reported by Gamatsu, the name of the trademark is called Project Zirkin. Now on the surface, this seems like nothing, but Zirkin is an item used in the Castlevania series, originally introduced in Castlevania Symphony of the Night. I cannot remember what you used it for. Now for some bad news, as the trademark also covers the use of, quote, commercial prize-winning game machines, end quote. Meaning this doesn't necessarily mean a new game. This could be literally something for a Pachinko machine or something. Let's be honest. Hopefully, I pray it's not as that uh, certain hell that would happen would make me, I mean, cry tears of blood. Blood tears. Um, now, I'm hoping Kuna, this is true, as if I'm a betting man, we we do have a lot more instances of Konami getting back into the video games industry recently with a couple like remasters and these things kind of dipping their toes back into making video games. And this lines up with that. We know they're having a big showcase at E3. I believe that was according to Jeffrey Grubb. I apologize if I have that incorrect, but I'm pretty sure that is according to him. That might have been Tom Henderson. Someone said this. So we know that they're going to be at an E3 with a big showcase of Castlevania and something Metal Gear. This could point to that. This is almost perfect timing for that trademark. Uh, so it's solidified for whatever they're doing. Um, so we'll have to we'll have to see how this happens and what they're going to be doing with Castlevania and with um, Metal Gear. Um, I'm not the biggest Metal Gear fan. I, I will be happy when they're doing whatever remake they're doing, probably. Castlevania, I think, is such an important game, an important series, that that just needs to be around in some way, it, either in a 2D space. I know um, uh, the original uh, creator um, is doing Bloodstained in these things, which is very good. Bloodstained Curse of the Moon is an incredible game. Um, I didn't really love the Ritual of the Night game, but I loved Curse of the Moon 1 and 2. Uh, that's like must plays for anyone who likes Castlevania even a little bit. Uh, I mean, it's straight up just a Castlevania game. Um, but I think they should come back into the space as one, their IP is sorely missed, at least uh, in my opinion, um, in, of course, Suikoden and Castlevania and Metal Gear, you know, there's just, they have so many IP that re- it really would be a shame if they never touched this, uh, thing with new games. So hopefully this is maybe a new game, maybe 2D, maybe 3D, who knows? They haven't made the 3D Castlevania since, um... Oh my god, uh, Castlevania Lords of the Shadow 2, which I think was like 2014 or something. So, something like that. Uh, it, was like er- it was early in the Xbox One, um, if my memory serves. I could be wrong on that. Uh, but uh, not important. Um, but we haven't seen that in a while. We haven't really seen Castlevania. I would love to see that. The show did great. Hopefully that shows like, hey, there's interest in the IP. You can capitalize on these things. Like if we have to get business to business that much, then here we are. But let's it looks like we might be getting the game, which I'll be happy with. Venom's voice actor in the upcoming sequel to Insomniac Spider-Man, of course named Spider-Man 2, 
may have leaked some details that he probably shouldn't have. Tony Todd, the voice of the Venom, has stated on Twitter in response to a fan asking about the game uh, when they're uh, when they could expect it. Uh, he says, quote, looks like September massive publicity coming in August. Commercials start dropping in August. So I'm told. Hold on. Uh, hold on to. Oh, and hold your breath. Sorry, it was cut off. Uh, hold your breath. Uh, gonna be necessary. End quote. Uh, this gentleman, I believe, is used to movies, so he does not know. Similar to how Norman Reedus uh, accidentally leaked that he's working on the sequel to Death Stranding already before it was announced. Uh, same here, as uh, this gentleman is probably used to movies. Movies you announce once you have, but sometimes even before scripts are written, you send the interest or, or you send the um uh. I forget what it's named in movies, but pretty much like the work order to, to like, hey, let's start making a movie. Like, and they start writing the script and they're, they're going, they're going. You know about it. It's been announced. There is no secrecy at all. Really, I mean, really at all. The only time that it's really secret, I believe, is like when they're buying scripts, I believe. Like, that's when you don't know much about them. Like, when that happens or how that happens, that kind of process that they do. Um, but really, since that, like, th this is this is probably like he said this and was he probably got like a call two minutes after he posted that like what are you doing and he's like what why aren't why why can't i talk about it so we know spider-man's coming in uh, september i don't see why he would not have that knowledge this is not a goofy situation if you don't know what that means uh goofy's voice actor from kingdom hearts 3 when that was about to come out um he said like two years before the game came out that it, that he he's pretty sure it comes out later this year I mean, he has zero understanding of how games work. So that was a situation that, of course, was not um, this, the, quite the same as this situation as uh, this gentleman obviously knows. He even knows that, hey, massive publicity coming in August. So that means in August, we'll probably get like state of plays of these things. We're going to get commercials in probably like it's going to be in August. So that could be during uh, football games. and things. So it, it's going to begin soon very excited uh since it's september and since uh starfield has been delayed there is now a not zero chance that we get starfield and spider-man 2 within either a week to five days of each other which <laughs> strap it folks that's gonna be quite the week if that is true hopefully uh that isn't true so people can partake um it'll be perfect if one is in the first week and one is in the last week so people can uh, afford both games now, this one, not a write-up as I wanted uh, to... Uh, it, it felt like I would have copied. This is one of those situations where it feels like I just would have copied what they said. So I just want to read directly from Polygon. Don't usually talk about Polygon here. So this is uh, this is nice. Michael McWhorter. A new, very different style of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game is currently in development. An adaptation of The Last Ronin, the 2020 graphic novel that told a grim futuristic story about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, of course. Uh, like the comic, The Last Ronin video game adaptation will be a darker, more mature take on the typically colorful Ninja Turtles. According to Doug Rosen, Senior Vice President for Games and Emerging Media at Paramount Global, the rights holder for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, in an interview with Polygon last week, Rosen likened the upcoming third-person action role-playing game to Sony's recent God of War titles and said it will be authentic to the story of the Last Ronin arc, which is set in a future where one of the Turtles has survived that's about all we need to really discuss as that told us everything we really needed to know right it's going to be inspired by the new god of war titles that just came out and it's going to be taking place exclusively in the last run in arc um now the last run in arc is very cool i'm i'm not going to spoil anything of the thing i'm just going to tell you what the cover is the cover is a is one of the turtles you don't know what happened to the other three and the last turtle has all of their weapons. So one of the turtles, and he has a black bandana. So, you know, it's not colored. It's like the original comic, so, like, you don't know who it is. Um, he has a Psy, he has a Katana, a bow staff, nunchucks, ninja star. Like, he has everything completely done now. Um, and it just tells a story of what it goes out to. And apparently, um, if I'm remembering correctly, the original creator came up with this, I believe or had a hand in it so it's like 
very close to like as canon as you can get, I guess, in this like Ninja Turtle world or whatever. Um, but very excited for this. I mean, this sounds sick. Are you kidding me? The last Ronin is being a dad. That's not, that that sentence is something I never would have really thought would happen. The last Ronin comic is being adapted into a God of War inspired game. That is bonkers. We don't know the studio. Uh, they haven't been announced yet. Uh, assuming they're working on it. It's very, again, this is uncommon for this to happen where like the, the Paramount's lead guy just comes out and says, okay, yeah, this is where this is happening. Uh, so they seem to not really care about the norms of video games, I guess I'd say. Uh, I think, I guess that's really all we have to really add. I'm just really excited. This game sounds very cool, um, but we know literally nothing else. We can't even tell you the studio, so we don't really know too much to be excited about it. It's just a cool premise. Let's go. Let's move on. Let's start the show with rumors. Now, this isn't a rumor roundup, but this is a big big meaty story and it's very true so i put this in the main sh main show start our show ps5 pro is maybe in development now you're already telling yourself mm, haven't i heard this before you kind of had it but give me one second to uh, get a good sip in here we go well rumors are popping up again in regards to a ps5 pro being in the planning this time, it comes the way of Tom Henderson over on Insider Gaming. He says he has trusted sources telling him two things. One, that a PS5 Pro may be coming out in late 2024, and that the PS6 will not be expected until at least 2028. Outside of that information, there's not much else as we have, as Tom restating that the... Uh, not much else as... Excuse me. The only thing else we have is Tom restating that the PS5 version with the detachable disk drive, is expected to phase out the current model. Now, if you have listened to this show or the show I'm about to bring up, then this isn't too much of a of a of a new news. As previously reported on Sacred Symbols a few months ago, the tech analyst on the show quote Moore's Law is dead. Um, end quote. That's like straight up his name. Uh, stated that the system was already in the planning stages, and his sources could not detail any of the specs in the system, as they were highly confidential material in the company. Uh, the dates Tom w has given is new information. However, I remember he didn't have dates. He was he had ballparks, I believe. Um, uh, and Moore's Law actually has more information on this, I believe. Uh, you can go check that out on either Sacred Symbols Patreon, I believe he's on there. Or um, I'm sure he has something on his actual channels to this effect as well to discuss so you could uh, check out for more in-depth conversations on this specific thing i'm just going to work on what i know uh, I, I watched a little bit of the conversation between him and sacred symbols host colin um discussing specifically about some of this stuff i could not finish it but um the ps5 pro seems to be an interesting thing that did as the ps5 is such good ssd it looks like the ps5 pro might be leaning into like the 4k gaming and that sort of such i remember Moore's laws that bringing up the fact that like it's interesting that they're doing a ps5 pro um as they could almost ride out the ps5 to the point where they can get a ps6 kind of sooner rather than later uh so i found that interesting as well as and having a ps5 pro next year is just so fast which means if we have a PS5 Pro next year, we have an Xbox Series Y or whatever the hell you want to call it next year as well. I'm I'm shocked as I feel like in the ecosystem right now, it would almost be more important to do a slim model and leave it at that because these things are pretty strong. Maybe we want it to be stronger. Do we have that many people interested in paying? I mean, this thing would have to be, for it to have any polarity uh, or I guess I would I should say any additional strength on top of the previous model, it would have to be six to seven hundred dollars. Unless I again, I'm not completely, I'm not in tune with the tech market, so maybe I wouldn't understand how that would work. But if the original PS5 is still about five hundred bucks, and I believe it's not really gotten cheaper 
they might be making a, they're definitely making more money now than they on um, when they sell one versus when they were selling one during covid uh because of just how the tech uh inflation has gone down uh during that kind of snafu that they had um how how would the how would it work as if it let's say it it doesn't even get a i mean maybe it, i mean i guess it's technically getting a price reduction with the detachable uh disk drive um as all of them will be one model that they sell they'll all sell the digital and then you'll just buy the disk drive separately which i'm sure saves them money on a bunch of different things like shipping and and these these things um but I would be interested on first no no news on the slim version. So this is probably the PS5 that we have uh for a while. Maybe at some point after the PS5 Pro they they release a slim, who knows. Um because they could probably make this thing smaller right now, I imagine. I, I again, I don't know how fast tech is, but it's already been 3 years. Th there has to be some way of of making this thing slightly smaller. So maybe they do that next. Maybe it's just the PS5 Pro, then they lead into the PS6. I don't know. Um, I mean, really, it, it's the options are limitless in their uh, point of view. As they could really do whatever they want, as they've they're selling these things like hotcakes, similar to the PS4. They just they just sell. So I wonder if they don't even want to disrupt that. Uh, who knows? Uh, but I feel like if you release a slim, you're almost double dipping. Right, because you get a lot of people who have the original PS5, and they're like, "Oh, well, I might as well get the new one, so I can have this one in the house or something." I don't know. I don't know. It reminds me of like Switch models, where there's a new Switch model, people feel like they need to get it. I don't know. That's really all I have left to add. I'm interested on a couple things. One, if the PS5 Pro really launches next year, uh, late next year, that is very surprising to me, anyways. But technically, that lines up with how the original. Um, uh, systems worked but i don't know this one is perplexing i'll have to wait to see more because i guess technically they are doing a slim version because they're taking off the disk drive so they, it will be small i don't know yeah, not important. on the kind of funny spoiler cast for the last of us tv series neil Druckmann appeared and he was asked a uh, question surrounding what naughty dog's next project may be now he did not give away the studio uh what the studio is working on but of course he said this Quote, I know the fans want The Last of Us Part 3. I hear about it all the time. All I can say is that we're already into our next project, and the decision was already been made. I can't say what it is, but that process we went through, there was a lot of consideration in different things, and we picked the thing we were most excited for. At the end of every project, we purposely explore several different projects. Some of them might be a sequel, and then a bunch of new ideas, and then we feel like, where do our passions lie? End quote. I feel like this is clearly him being like, hey, we're not working on part three yet. I know people want that. I can't say we're not. I can't say if we are anyways. So technically, this is just him telling them what's going on. Like, hey, look, I can't say anything, but I can say this. We pick a lot of things and we pick our favorite. So I feel like he wouldn't have this long winded conversation just to say yes I feel like it would have been a different way he would have said it. This guy's media trained out the wazoo, right? So he's going to say it in a way that we're not going to really garner much. It's really is your perspective on what you're seeing here. I do not think they're working on part three right now. I think they have a small people doing maybe pre-production. Maybe. Um, Naughty Dog's big enough to do two teams, but are they big enough to do two of those? I mean, they made uh, Uncharted 3 and Last of Us at the same time. Maybe they retry that and have Last of Us Part 3 working in the background while they create a new IP. I really feel like they want a new IP. I want. I think they, they want to try a new thing again, as they haven't made something new since Last of Us. I mean, that was in... Uh, I mean, when did the original Last of Us come out again? It was the same year the PS4 came out, so 2013, right? Last of Us release. Yeah, 2013. Same year as the PS3. A little bit before, June. June 14th. So they haven't made a new IP really since then. So maybe they want to flex flex some muscles. Right? They came they went from Uncharted to Last of Us. They finished out Uncharted, went into The Last of Us. And, and maybe we have the same situation with that where we instead of them 
stopping with Uncharted three, they they uh sorry, instead of them stopping with Uncharted, now they would stop with Last of Us and release another new IP alongside their part three version. Except in this situation it would be the last one in the series. Um now the wrench into everything is they are still technically working on Last of Us multiplayer, of course. We call it factions. They very very much don't like us calling it factions because I imagine it won't be 100% like factions. Something's going to be different. I really feel like something will be different because if it wasn't, it, I feel like it'd be made already. So I really think they're making a big thing. I don't know what it will look like, but it is not factions. It, it has to be something bigger. We'll have to see. I don't know. I, I'm... <sighs> Naughty Dog can do whatever they want. So it really is just up to them. And I don't think we have enough information on just, you know, it's just conjecture. But conjecture is fun. I think they're working on a new IP. I think they're also having going to have a second team working on uh, Last of Us Part 3. Again, once the Last of Us stuff is done and it's, and it's out, they'll probably have a small team updating it. I'm curious how that will work as... How long is Last of, Last of Us multiplayer is supposed to last? Like... They have to have a team set aside to update and complete the game. They've only released really like, I mean, I mean, they, they have multiplayer and Uncharted and, and of course the original Last of Us. So like, I guess they didn't have teams stay on it that long, but like, do they have teams? And this is just a good question in general. Did, 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 do they have people on at Naughty Dog like keeping update? Like, no, right. They don't have updates going out for like the old multiplayer game. So do they just hand that off to someone else? How does that work? I don't know. I'm taking a drink. We should move on. Speaking of upcoming projects being uh, being talked about by someone very familiar with the source, IO Interactive Chief Creative Officer Christian Elver Elverdim Elverdim Elverdam told Eurogamer when asked about the future of Hitman while the studio is working on the James Bond project. Bit of a late me statement. Hold on. There we go. Had a burp. Quote. Right now, a major, major new Hitman game. That's a little bit. That's a little bit on a hiatus. As we're building another agent fantasy, that's also taking up a lot of our time. But obviously, we'll come back to beloved Agent Forty Seven. He's still very much in the heart of this company. And then, at some point, obviously, as any creative, it would be nice to then go in and say, "Okay, well, with everything we've learned, what." would that be if we had to re-articulate a sandbox? What would that be like? Speaking of IO, they also opened a new studio in Turkey located in Meslak. Sayir, according to a... Uh, Meslak Sayir, yeah. According to a press release, it is said to, quote, establish a hub for AAA game development in the region and create a unique gaming experience for players across the world, end quote. All right, so we have two things. One, a new studio, always exciting. I imagine they'll do mostly support work with them. I uh, can't imagine them actually releasing a game by themselves. I imagine they're just there to help. And they're probably, uh, let's be honest, uh, using the cheap labor there <laughs> and how much cheaper it is. So, uh, Not to be dark and dreary, but I imagine that's what it's for. Uh, let's go into the original statement. Um, pretty obvious, right? I don't think they had the... Uh, team to really work on two major projects like that right they don't have a team to do just james bond and also make a hitman game at the same time right that that's we're talking 400 plus people probably at that point um also uh i know we're just leaving the naughty dog situation where that did happen naughty dog is an anomaly they did a lot of things that make people question how they even did it they made uncharted 3 um in a few months like or not a few months like in a very small amount of time if you look at that game, you would not have never have guessed. Never have guessed. I don't really have too too much to add as this is kind of a yeah, of course. Uh, a, you know, Hitman's gonna be on hands for quite a while. They keep um transforming what Hitman is in their own way. They now recently renamed Hitman just World of Assassination. I I believe is how that works. So it's not even Hitman one, two, and three anymore. I think it's I think it's just World uh, World of Assassination. And that and that's what it is. And you open that and you play all of the levels. Is how I understand it. It's very complicated as it's changed like seven times since it's come out. So I believe that's how it works. You can go check that out. It is very they're very good games, especially the latest one. The latest one's the best one. 
Okay. Now, the witch game from uh, Molasses Flood is being looked at. Now, we have a original statement from CG Project Red on this. It's very interesting. Let's read some of it. The management board of CG Project Red, with its register seat in Warsaw, hereby announces a decision regarding the establishment in the company's books of an impairment allowance with regard to expenses incurred in the scope of development work related to Project Sirius, which is under development at the Molasses Flood Studios. The value of expenses incurred by the end of 2020 was, uh, amounts in 33.4 million uh, uh, PLN. Uh, that should be... Uh, that's Poland's currency. I can't remember what it's... But what the name of it is um and will burden the uh financial results of the company of the company and cd project Red groups of the year 2022 the value of expenses occurred in january and february amount to 9.5 million and will accordingly burden the financial results in the first quarter of 2023 the aforementioned decision is based on results of evaluation of the scope and commercial potential of the original concept of project series and the ongoing work on formulating a new framework for this project now uh, pretty scathing <laughs> uh, from them. So they're pretty much taking um, a charge and it looks like they're evaluating how uh, how this project is going to work in the grand scheme of things as they're already pretty much dogging on it. It's like, hey, look, uh, we're taking on these expenses now um, because they're not going to be serving a value, right? Hold on, let me close that. Um, we're taking, we're going to take on expenses. We're going to announce, Hey, look, this, this is going to be burden because we're taking expenses. Now it looks like they might be doing some early cancellation of the project. Who knows? I know a CG project red person came out and said like, Hey, look, we just want project series to be good. You know, they, they have a very PR thing to say, but when they said that, I was like, interesting. So Something might be going down with this project, Sirius, whatever it, uh, whatever it may be or whatever it turns out to be, uh, as it's quite troubling to see that they just go, hey, look, we're taking expenses out now. Hey, just a heads up, our quarter earnings are going to be hurt because we're ta we're we're going to go ahead and and, and like, cash them out and say like, hey, look, boom, we pay, we're we're going to pay for your expensing. We'll pay for whatever deal that they signed and they might take it over or take it from less but who knows that that is uncommon to say the least next one is atari is buying night dive studios now i did a little thing here so give me one second to load this up there you go i have it open All right, now, agreement signed to acquire Night Dive Studios. This is from Atari. Led by industry veterans Stefan Kick and Larry Cooperman, Night Dive Studios, a full-service development and publishing company with expertise in restoring, optimizing, and publishing classic video games. Uh, Night Dive's most recent project is a remastered version of a classic first-person shooter, System Sock, which is one of the most anticipated retro releases of 2023. System Sock is now available uh, a key to the success of Night Dive is their proprietary Kex engine that makes classic games playable on modern hardware and gives the studio the ability to enhance and improve upon the original to meet the expectation of contemporary players. For the physical year ending in December 2022, Night Dive's reported revenue of approximately $3 million USD. The founders own 87% of the company's shares, while Weed Ronson, chairman and CEO of Atari, owns a minority stake of 13%. So it seems like they already had some interest in them prior. With this acquisition, uh, acquisition, Atari will enrich its large library of owned IP, be able to leverage Night Dive's proprietary technology, and utilize Night Dive's publishing capabilities to support Atari's retro-focused growth strategy. Now, let's talk about the terms and timing of the acquisition. The purchase price of Night Dive will consist of an initial consideration of USD $10 million payable half in cash and half in Atari shares at the closing of the acquisition. Plus, in an earn out of up to $10 million payable in cash over the next three years, based on the future performance of, of Night Dive. Surprising that's not a little longer. I imagine they don't, just don't have the funds, um, and they probably just couldn't get the agreement otherwise. But, and everything else is pretty much how everything will be payable. Uh, there's things like 
bonds and these things that I'm not going to bore you with. Um, I just thought that was interesting. Atari, we fo- we saw a full write out on how the thing works. It's very cool. Um, a very common thing of half in cash, half in shares. Uh, generally, you don't just straight up go, hey, here's all the money. Here, buy. Uh, and also, of course, the very common payable over the next few years. Three years. I'm surprised how short that is. Uh, uh, that's almost, um, that's barely enough time to make a project. Uh, maybe, maybe they'll get, feel like they'll get their money worth out of three years. Cause once that three years is, you know, you got your bonuses, you might, you know, you might lose all your talent after that point. So who knows? We'll have to see. I don't have too, too much else to add. Atari bought a studio. Atari is not really doing much now. So it's like, you know, cool. Moving on. Date updates. We have PlayStation Plus Extra for March. Now, remember, this is extra. So you have to play the additional amount to get the the game catalog. So, of course, if you have premium, you have everything listed. I'll make sure to differentiate if it's extra or premium. All of this should be extra. Then I'm about to uh, name off. Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection. Chia. Tom Glancy's Rainbow Six Extraction. Ghostwire Tokyo. Life is Strange True Colors. Immortals Phoenix Rising. Life is Strange 2. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot which I believe is the PS4 version, which sucks. Um, you don't get the enhanced PS5 version that they released. Street Fighter V Champion Edition. Untitled Goose Game. Great game. Final Fantasy Type Zero HD. Shocked to see this game again. Rage 2. Neo The World Ends With You. Haven. Now, these are the pla- PlayStation Classics, and this is only available to the premium tier. Ridge Racer Type 4. This is a PS1 game. Ape Academy 2, this is a PSP game. Siphon Filter Dark Mirror, this is a PSP game. This is everything for extra and premium. Pretty strong lineup. I'm pretty indifferent. Everything was like, okay, that's good. A lot of things, you know, old, but if you haven't played any of those games, I mean, a lot of those games are very, very, very good. Uh, I imagine most people don't go back and forth from extra and essential. Imagine most people either stay at extra or just stay at essential. So if you have an extra, I mean, you know, no downside on you playing any of that. Anyways. The Spider's Thread update is coming to Ghostwire Tokyo, which will add more areas to explore in the game. But this update also comes with the announcement that Ghostwire Tokyo is coming for the first time to Xbox on April 12th. Tells you that the deal's over. They can finally move over the game. Uh, of course, this was a PlayStation exclusive. Same as um, Deathloop, as it it had the exclusive window and it's over now so it can finally come to xbox very excited as i haven't played it yet i was actually going to buy it relatively soon but i remembered that oh wait no this is going to come to game pass so i could just wait so april 12th I'll, april 12th i'll see you all there i'll be playing ghostwire citizen sleeper is coming to ps5 and ps4 on march 31st and the dlc episode purge is coming on march 30th i need to redo another playthrough as i kind of messed up my last playthrough so i want to redo it um because I want to play this stuff and I want to be ready for the DLC because this game is very, very, very good. I recommend everyone who has even a passing, uh, how, how would I put this? Like a interest in reading, I guess. Like if you like reading books and like, like text adventures, even if you don't think you like it, I would say tr- at least try this because it's still in Game Pass. So just give it a shot. It's very good game. Very good game. Hyperlight Breaker Early Access has been laid to the fall of this year. Fortunate to hear, but whenever they release the game, it's going to be happy soon. Sea of Stars will be launching on Xbox One and Xbox Series S and X alongside the already announced platforms of PS5, PS4, Switch, and PC on August 29th. And that is everything that I needed to update you on the dates. Now, to end the show with, of course, what's cute. Now, this, of course, can be a game, a podcast, TV show, a movie, a book, manga, really anything, a podcast. What do you have queued up for the weekend? Now, I am going to be playing. Well, actually, I say that. I'm going to be going to this, like, wedding reception thing. So, I'm going to be busy. But when I come back, Resident Evil 4, straight up. Going to be playing that. Completely focusing on that, aside from my random Destiny raid here and there. All Resident Evil 4, all the time. And that's that's really it until i beat that i don't have other plans now i do have persona 5 kind of in in the back of my mind you know like 
scratching in the back of my brain like hey go play it and i'm like oh, i gotta fight i gotta fight the urge because i need to beat this game then i have some time because once i beat this game i really don't have anything until april 19th in horizon burning shores and then after that it's april 28th for star wars i believe so oh, i have a two-week window i'll be able to play with Five then um, aside from that it's really all I have. So um, remember, this is a question that I pose to you at home. What do you have queued up for the weekend? Leave a comment, tweet at me, et cetera, et cetera. But the Chiefers, that's the show for the week. Thank you so much for joining me. And remember, like, comment, subscribe, share, you know, all the good things that you can do to a video. Uh, do a five-star review on the podcast service of your choice that you're listening to. Uh, this is everything closing out for the week. Thank you so much for joining me. Next week will always be as good as this week. And I want you to know, remember, go Chief.